Hi, I'm Allie with PotomacBeads.com and PotomacBeads.eu, and today's Better Beater is going to feature the lengths of necklaces. So how long do you want to wear your necklace based on what you're wearing or based on your body type? Stay tuned to find out the answers. So today's episode of Better Beater, we are going to talk about the question of what length to make something. For bracelets, it's really going to be determined by the length of the wrist of the person that you're making it for. If you know somebody has a smaller wrist, you may want to shoot more for six and three quarters inches. If somebody has a larger wrist, you may want to shoot for seven and a half inches. But when it comes to bracelets, again, those are really going to be determined by the size of the wrist. If you're unsure the size of the wrist, you may want to try some stretchy string and just make something um, a little bit more about seven inches that can stretch on and off the bracelet. But what about necklaces? Necklaces come in a variety and tons of different lengths. I actually have a blog on this that have kind of what sizes would be good and appropriate for what people. And I wanted to kind of go over also what was flattering on people when you're deciding if you're making a gift, if it's not for you, if you have the cut of a dress, what size necklace should you wear and what length? So I wanted to start out with shorter lengths. If you are talking about a shorter length, you're gonna look at a 15 inch is gonna be like a choker. I tend not to wear chokers that much, except for maybe one small bead or just a small beaded cord. However, if you are looking to do a choker style on a loom or a longer project, that's gonna be about 14 inches. One thing to keep in mind, if you're looking at necklaces that are shorter, like I have this Onyx one here, that is a nice offset there, graduated Onyx, that is 16 inches. One thing to keep in mind with a 16 inch necklace like this is that the 16 inches generally is going to go about the cord that is in on the inside. If you have large beads like this one, the center here is about 45 millimeter. When you have large beads, it's going to appear smaller. The number, the distance, it's almost uh, 20 millimeter from the hole to the outside of the bead. That's going to make the necklace appear shorter than 16 inches. 16 inches is generally going to be the shortest necklace that you are going to want to make. Whether or not you're making something that's seed beaded or you have gemstones, and keep in mind that you have a larger bead like this, you may wanna actually make it more like 18 inches. 18 inches is gonna sit just below the throat or at the collarbone. It's generally speaking one of the most flattering looks. If you have a neck um, that you do want to have just a little pendant on, that 16 inches when you have it on here, it's not gonna look nearly as short as a larger bead or even something that would be double stranded will look. So here I have um, the Demi Rounds that we did a Rivoli Demi Round uh, cover in one of our YouTube videos. And I have this here and this is on 16 inches. Keep in mind when you add a pendant, it is going to add to the look that amount of length. So here I have a 16 inch chain that I had made with the Demi Rounds and these are the 8 O's and then the 11 O's as the spacers. And this hangs 16 inches and then it hangs almost an additional inch. If you're not sure exactly what length you want something to hang, it's always a good idea if you use a lobster clasp that you can actually make an extender chain. When you use a lobster clasp, especially if you're going to risk and make something 16 inches, if you use a lobster clasp and use a little bit of chain at the back, you can then adjust the length of the necklace. So that can make it easily convertible from 16 to 18 inches. Make the longest piece of chain, the longest length that you think you would like to wear the project. And then if you have a chain that's big enough, you can always link into different links on that chain. So if you have a pendant and you want a 16 inch necklace, keep in mind that whatever you're adding to it is going to add to that length. Bigger beads, you may wanna do longer than 16, even if you want that kind of uh, choker right around the neck collar that you're looking at. Also keep in mind that this will be shown well if you have an actual button down collar. It's nice to keep necklaces that are 16 to 18 inch so that you actually see them appear above and um, inside the actual collar of the shirt. If you have a v-neck, you may want to look more into something that's about 18 inches because that 18 inches then will appear right at the bottom of the v-neck of the shirt. Keep in mind these lengths and these estimates all are a standard. You may be shorter, taller, have a larger neck, have a smaller, more slender neck, so keep that in mind as you're working. This necklace here is actually a 20 inch necklace. However, because of the chain, it can be made smaller 
than the 20 inches. 20 inches would be the max. And again, I like to use lobster clasps on necklaces that I think I want to adjust and have different lengths of chain on them. This necklace here that has the drops, when you look at the necklace, it fits really, really nicely over a turtleneck. So that's why it has that 20 inch length. Again, I can shorten it. That's always a great thing to add to the end. Even if I'm doing a seed beaded necklace, you may wanna use a lobster clasp and add some chain to the back because that's going to affect it. If you are looking 18 to 20 inches, one thing you want to keep in mind, this is the Raquette's necklace, and this necklace ended up being right about 19 inches. Sometimes you do not want to extend your full pattern to the back of the necklace. In this design, I did go the whole way to the back of the necklace, but if you tend to wear your hair down or if you have a larger neck, you may want to actually stop with the pattern and go shorter in the back. I actually just saw on our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making, one of the customers that designed and did this necklace did the same thing that she actually shortened in the back and she had run out of daggers and did not use them the full way in the back. So if you're looking at a pattern, that you're not sure um, if you want that to sit on your collarbone and sit the whole way around, but you know you want it to be a little bit shorter, look at actually decreasing it and making it smaller in the back of the design. Not only is that gonna make it easier to put it on and off, it'll sit more flattering and you won't have it kind of sticking up right along the collarbone. So I did use the daggers the whole way along this project here and made it about 19 inches. But again, you can use chain in the back and I think chain in the back, like I showed for this gemstone one here, gives a really, really modern, modern look. I've done that for Cellini spirals. And again, it makes it really easy as we go into a different change of weather to lengthen it or shorten it if you have a turtleneck on, a V-neck or a crew neck shirt. If you have a crew neck shirt that you're wearing, avoid that 16 inches. What's gonna happen, generally speaking, is that crew neck shirt is going to fall right at the same length in the necklace and you're not going to end up seeing the necklace. It's gonna fall kind of right on that ridge or that bump of the necklace. So if you have a crew neck, try that 18 to 20 inch. That's going to be more flattering. V-neck, 16 to 18 inches. And if you are doing also a button down shirt, same thing. If you are going with a shirt or a dress, if you're going for a more formal event that is going to be strapless, I would actually recommend going with a multi-strand necklace. Whether or not this is seed beaded or actually gemstones like this one here that's pearls and amber, it's going to give a little bit of a pop to the design and really show off that bare neck. It also helps to elongate the look and it kind of makes the shoulders look a little bit less broad if you're going along with a actual strapless dress. Bring it color into it, bring attention into it, or go big and that'll bring attention up to your face and away from some of the areas that you may not want to flatter as much. So if you do have a um, complete bandeau style or actual strapless style, go for chunky, bring it up towards the face and usually color is going to add to that look. To go with an actual um, kind of very modern, very chic look, this is actually, I stole this necklace off of Cheryl here um, at PotomacBeads.com. And this is one that she wears a lot and I absolutely love it. It's just onyx rondelles that is knotted and then it has a little tassel here at the bottom. But she wears a lot and doubles up the look of wearing a shorter necklace, like a 16 or an 18 inch, inside of a long opera necklace. This is 36 inches and it has that knotting and that flowing event. You don't want to take something that long and go so heavy as say this one here that has the aventurine drops. You don't want to go that heavy the whole way along the necklace. It's really going to weigh you down, draw the attention down towards your stomach, and really not flatter at all. If you have something simple in design that's more slender and then can actually get a little more fun at the bottom, a lot of the longer necklaces that I've been doing modernly have tassels at the bottom as well, but that draws your attention uh, more to kind of the style of the design and not necessarily to the base of the stomach or to right below the chest where this is going to hang. Also, it gives you an opportunity to wear two necklaces at once. Keep in mind too, if you are just doing a long necklace, say that it was just the onyx, you can always double it up at the end. I showed this in one of the last lives by using an S hook and then you have two 16 inch strands, which would look nice in other situations as well. 
Again, when doubling up or doing multi-strand necklaces, I like to have at least um, three inches difference in length from one strand to the other if you do want them to sit apart. Depending on the length that you do, by picking them and giving them three inches apart in length, and this is where you may wanna use a beadboard, because a beadboard can really become your friend as you're working with multi-strand necklaces. You can use the beadboard to help you determine exactly how far you want the beads to hang from one another and also where the pattern's going to sit if you do not want it to sit exactly lined up from one strand to the other. If you want the amber to sit inside, say, on this design and alternate the look as well. Check out a beadboard and then make sure that you have at least three inches, which is going to usually equate to about an inch of space between the two strands. Again, if you're using larger beads, like I showed with the onyx, keep in mind that it's always, always going to appear shorter. I have a necklace that has three strands that are 18 inches of chunky, chunky gemstones. Because they are large, even though it is 18 inches, it appears more to be about 16 inches in length because I am doubling or I'm tripling them up. And because they are chunky, it appears a lot shorter than it actually is. So keep that in mind. More slender beads definitely are going to appear a little bit shorter and are a little bit more forgiving to do in that shorter length. Also an option when you're creating and doing length is to go from doing multiple strands that are the same length to a stringle larger strand. I don't wanna do this larger strand. This necklace happens to be 24 inches. I don't wanna do this larger strand completely the whole way around. Again, it's gonna weigh down the look of my outfit or my dress, and I don't want that look and that heavy look up near my neck. A solution for that is to do the chain, like I showed with the other gemstone, or actually you can do a multi-strands for that necklace. If you're not sure and you're not building a necklace for your exact dress or exact shirt that you're going to be wearing with it, which honestly I most of the time make my necklace and then buy the shirt to go along with it if I have nothing to match, keep in mind a, an extender chain using a chain in the back is great to have that difference of the necklace in length. So whether or not you want to go from the 18th, which is kind of just below the collarbone, to a 24, which is going to hit kind of right at the chest or the V of the chest, um, you have that option to decrease or increase the size. Keep in mind also that uh, the position of the body is going to be smaller um, or tighter or closer up depending on a larger neck. It's going to seem a little bit further down laying on a neck if you would have a mannequin that's going to have a little bit uh, more slender neck. Also when you're talking about kids lengths, this is where I really think that the extender chain and the lobster come in handy. Kids grow. So just like adults sometimes, um, we're not sure exactly which length we want it. Kids sometimes it's a necessity for them to grow with their necklace. My daughter wears an amber necklace that um, has an extension chain so that way it can grow with her. And generally speaking, about one year old, you're gonna want it about eight to 12 inches. Always a good idea to do eight inches and then about 12 inches as well. Keep in mind too, if you're doing something for a child that age, you wanna make sure that it is safe for the child that age. Then one to three year olds, you're looking at 10 to 12 inches, three to seven, 12 to 14. And then as you get much higher than seven, um, I have a nine year old daughter. She pretty much just wears standard length necklaces now. The 16 inches on her is going to look more about a 20 inches on a regular adult. So sometimes I'll start out that age kind of seven and going up to 10, 12 year olds with a 14 inch necklace, thinking that it'll hit about the look of the 16 inches. So there's always the question, like I said, of when you are building a seed bead necklace or you're knotting or you're creating, what length do you do the necklace? Keep in mind, large beads are going to appear a lot shorter. You wanna make sure if they are large beads that they are kind of up towards your face, that they're accentuating your face. If you have and want to make those large beads longer, keep in mind to do something a little bit slender as it goes up the neck, so that way it doesn't draw attention to the base of um, your chest or to the stomach. It stays face focused if you get something a little bit smaller towards the top. If you do want to layer and do the multi-layering look, a nice opera length of 32 inches to 36 inches is a great idea for that modern laying look. Also, if you are doing seed beads, keep in mind, if you do have an outfit that you're wearing it with that has a collar or um, a V-neck, you may want to do something more slender along the back. And then always give that alternative, if you are doing multi-strands or something a little bit chunkier, that you have that extender chain option in the back. 
I know this is not all inclusive. It cannot possibly all inclusive because different beads are gonna give different styles and different lengths are gonna look different on different people. But hopefully this gave you an idea of what I consider flattering on people, the lengths of necklaces that I think are appropriate for different sets of clothing and ideas to use some of the bigger down to the smaller beads as well. If you enjoyed this Better Beater, you can always check out all the other ones going from different sizes of wire and making head pins to what you should know about the size of seed beads as well as different closure techniques. So check all of those out as well. You can also give a little thumbs up to the video if you like these Better Beaters. Again, these are designed to make you more informed, to make better jewelry, to make better purchases, and to make uh, really yourself excel in the craft that you're doing. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel for regular updates when we produce the Better Beater videos, when we do tutorials showing you exactly what to make and exactly different uh, techniques that are involved, as well as new products to the market. You can also shop with us online at potomacbeads.com to find all the wonderful gemstones and seed beads that you see here, as well as some more information and blogs about different um, categories and topics that you may find useful. So check us out at potomacbeads.com, potomacbeads.eu. I'll also put links below the video in the description of the video to um, purchase from us online, as well as check out our Facebook page, Potomac Beads, and our Facebook page, our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Show off all the different things that you wear, go over the different designs that you may have, the different problems, and get inspired by a wonderful group of people. As always, no matter what you're doing in the beading world, have fun doing it, enjoy what you're doing, and have fun playing around with the different lengths of necklaces. Hope you enjoyed this Better Beater, and join me next time for our next Better Beater episode decide, designed to make you into a better beater.